Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming back from lunch. I am excited to talk about um, RISE project, Risk v Software Ecosystem. We heard a lot about where Risk v is, where Risk v is going in the next few years, and how it relates to AI ML developers. These developers are going to need something on top of ISAs, and what are we doing as a community to get Risk v ready for these developers? So let's take a look at it. Um, we are going to walk, walk you through what RISE is and how RISE was formed, why RISE is important and playing crucial role in Risk v ecosystem, who are the key members coming together to solve this problem, and uh, I got a few people asking questions, and how is RISE related to Risk v International? Let's take a look at that. Where do we see the challenges? What are the opportunities? And how are we leveraging Risk v as an open standard ecosystem? And most importantly, how can you get involved? Um, at Revos a few years ago, we often found a lot of the effort that we're doing. For example, we were working on vector crypto extensions, enabling that in LLVM. Our engineers worked for two months, and we upstreamed our patches. What we realized is our co-traveler, Sci-Fi, was also working on the exact same problem. And uh, we only realized that a few months later when the patches are upstreamed. So the projects had to look at both patches, how to merge it, how to prioritize. And this was not an isolated case. Because we were duplicating efforts, because we didn't realize our co-travelers working on similar problems, we came together and asked ourselves, how can we coordinate better? And can we divide and conquer? Because there is a lot of problems to solve when it comes to Risk v software ecosystem readiness. So RISE was born because of these issues, and it has three goals. First, we want to raise the quality of Risk v's platform implementations and make that as tier one platform, like other ISAs. And the second, we want to make sure Risk v has the best languages and runtimes and libraries. Compilers are ready as well. And last, we don't want to duplicate efforts. We want to align our, our efforts, and we want to go travel together in this journey. So how are we achieving this goal? RISE is doing that in three different uh, ways. We're coordinating with our partners. We're working closely with open source projects, and we want them to see us as a resource and helping all of these open source projects to get ready for Risk v software readiness. All right, so these are our members. As you could see, we have industry SOC vendors that are mature vendors like MediaTek, Qualcomm, and we have Risk v startups like Risk uh, Revos, Tenstorrent, Ventana. We also have platform owners like Google getting Android ready. And it, in addition, distros need to get ready too. So Canonical, Red Hat, all of these companies are joining forces in this cause. Some of the effort, the way we're collaborating is we're getting our engineers together, talking to, uh, talking to each other and really collaborating where, what are the problems we need to solve and how can we uh, collaborate in this effort. And the second way we are collaborating is we're funding specific projects that none of these members are working on and projects that we think is important. So two ways, our resources and our investments. And this, this is how these members are collaborating together. Uh, the important questions I got asked in the booth yesterday was how, uh, how should we look at RISE versus Risk v International? RISE was formed May of 2023 as a sister organization to Risk v International. The success of Risk v ecosystem, we can look at it in t as two pillars. First, a standard hardware architecture, clear um, open standards. We talked about that a, lo a lot this morning. All of the speakers are where all of these extensions are getting ratif uh, ratified, the extensions that are getting added to risk, um, risk five architecture. So risk five international is doing great job in that aspect and leading us uh, to get risk five to be on par with other competing architectures. Now on top of the architecture, we need to have the software ready. 
So the second pillar in this journey is a thriving software op uh, open source ecosystem. Every aspect of the software stack, what's sitting from, uh, on top of your silicon to all the way to applications, every aspect needs to be ready. And commercial ready, not just ready. So that's where RISE comes into picture. In addition, uh, in addition to Risk Five International RISE effort, we have a thriving community, universities working on. So all of these aspects, all of these communities coming together. So you can look at RISE as a sister organization to Risk Five International, and we are uh, constantly talking to each other and really collaborating. What areas that needs to be invested? All right. Um, the, the key topic uh, key topic in the conference has been AI and how risk five can leverage uh, can be leveraged and why is risk five is can be an architecture for uh, for AI a lot of the applications the developers when they when they do their development every aspect of the software stack needs to be ready. So when RISE members came together and we looked at what are the challenges in RISC-V software, uh, software readiness, there are three things we saw. One, we're, work we're all working to get RISC-V ready, but we're not collaborating or coordinating as much. Often, we're do uh, working in isolation. So that is a problem we needed to solve. Second, there wasn't enough RISC-V developers we needed to share our knowledge and uh, uh, invest in next generation of RISC-V developers. And the third, really, the coordinating uh, effort. So with those challenges, we looked at every aspect and areas on how we can collaborate. So these are the areas RISE is looking at and working to uh, collaborate together. We're both uh, on the compiler side, LLVM, GCC, one of the projects that RISE is funding is spec optimization for both of these compilers. And earlier, actually, in the, um, in the panel, one of the gentlemen asked Python question, right? That was a really important um, question. We, we actually just talked about this two weeks ago. Python packages like NumPy and PyTorch, often they're not written in Python, a lot of it in C or C++. So they need to be compiled before they become Python, Python packages. And we, as RISE members, recognized this challenge. So we're actually rolling out a project next week. We were just talking about this, so that would, it was such a coincidence. We're, um, we're rolling out Python packaging support, basically getting key Python packages ready for RISC-5 RISC 64. Uh, so you will see that, uh, see that coming. And the, another area for uh, those of us who spend some time in x86 world, uh, as, you, uh, as you see Intel's platform development guide, it's hundreds of pages. How do you develop on x86 is very well written. And we don't have that for RISC-V. So RISE members actually took it upon themselves. We published RISC-V optimization guide. And it's still in, in its infancy, nowhere close to how uh, mature x86 or uh, what Intel published. But we started that effort. It's on um, RISE GitHub. I encourage you to take a look at it. And actually, you can be part of the, the effort make changes or um, suggest what needs, to be, uh, what needs to be added. So there are these type of efforts to, of how, uh, how best we're enabling developers and really getting the software to be commercially ready. I think uh, earlier Charles, Charles said we shouldn't uh, lose sight of our customers. At the end of the day, we're all making products to our customers. Um, one of the questions that often comes up is, if you're all open sourcing everything, uh, what is your secret, uh, secret sauce, right? These are the fundamental um, software stacks that we're all going to do it together, and we're going to stand on top of that, innovate on top of that. Um, Mark Hader earlier mentioned how we do AI changing so much having the compilers ready, having language runtimes to be optimized for RISC-V architecture are going to give us the ability to innovate. And whether you're um, developing a product for auto uh, autonomous driving or AI applications, having these software to be 
uh, ready so you can do your innovation on top of this. So we're really looking at this as we're co-travelers in this journey, having RISC-V software ecosystem to be commercially ready. And one of the questions was, is there a shortcut? No, there isn't a shortcut, but what there is, is we, we don't have to do it alone, as Charles mentioned. Uh, there is no shortcut, but we don't have to do it alone. That alone itself helps us to create um, that shortcut. Um, few areas, um, how are we contributing? So we have all these challenges, software, it took ARM 10 plus years to get into data centers and have, um, have ARM to be everywhere in the, from client to all the way to the data centers. How do we get RISC-V to be on par with whether that's ARM or x86? Uh, X86? One, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna collaborate. Second, all of these open source standard collaborations, whether we talked about whether that's Python or optimizing for language runtimes or getting RISC-V uh, ready for every aspect of compilers. So we're gonna do this in open source software stacks. And uh, another thing RISE has done is enabling developers. So we have enabled CIs in various open source project, so if you need a compute power, you can reach out to RISE and enable your RISC-V library or whatever you're working on and get help to, uh, from the compute perspective. And we're also uh, looking at how do we do grassroots efforts. So we're launching a program called RISE RISC-V Developer Incentive Pilot Program and really helping it specific individuals who are looking at uh, RISC-V enabling, whether that's small libraries or other projects um, to RISC-V. So there are three key areas. We're collaborating in open source projects. Uh, we're creating compute power to developers so that they have the resources they need to build on RISC-V. And the, the lastly, really enabling individual developers to continue in their efforts. And how could you, uh, how can you join in this effort? There are multiple ways. One is simply becoming a, a member, and that's not the only way. Um, we launched um, RISE request for proposal program last year. We have done 10 projects. We've invested 10 projects in this. Python packaging is gonna be one of them. We did uh, Java language runtimes optimization. So there are multiple projects. We're basically funding projects that RISE members recognize as an important, but don't have the resources to invest in. So we're reaching out to the community, reaching out to the maintainers, and asking their uh, help to enable different uh, RISC-V projects. And lastly, what I mentioned earlier, we're trying to uh, look at incentivizing developers and how could we encourage them to have RISC-V as the default platform as they look at uh, their de uh, developments. So those are, the, uh, those are the three different ways that you can get involved. And as we look at it, RISE is not just a collaborative project. We look at it as, as a movement, that we're bringing all of you, all of us together to get that RISC-V in next five to 10 years to become the default architecture, just like x86 or ARM. So we look at it as RISE as a movement, and I urge you, all of you, to join us in this exciting journey to get RISC-V advanced. So I'll stop here, and if uh, there are any questions, All right. Thanks, everyone.